इज टू मच सच ए सिंपल क्वेश्चन दिस लेसन और टॉक बाय ग्लोबल एकेडमी ऑफ मॉलिकुलर थेरेपीज ओजोन एंड मॉलिकुलर थेरेपी एसोसिएशन ऑफ इंडिया एंड इंडियन एकेडमी ऑफ ऑर्थोपेडिक सर्जन इज अबाउट डोसिस ऑफ हिमैटोजिनस ओजोन एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन वी कैन इवन गो अदर वे सेफ डोसिस ऑफ हिमैटोजिनस एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन इट इज एन एस्टैब्लिश फैक्ट दैट ओजोन इनहलेशन इज डेंजरस फॉर अवर लंग्स दिस फैक्ट हैज ऑलवेज बीन बॉदरिंग ओजोन थेरापिस फॉर द लास्ट थ्री और फोर डीकेड्स इवन बोची considered ozone as a toxic gas and used it in very small doses for therapeutic applications though he was a very ardent proponent of the benefits of ozone therapy in a plethora of conditions ozone therapists world across have always recommended very low concentrations of ozone though higher concentrations were accepted by conventional therapists for intra articular intra discal or bubbling in saline for wound washes etc when it came to hematological administration the therapists in general were extremely cautious integrated medicine therapists are all the more cautious about the doses of ozone recommended concentration for ozone mhd by bochi was 10 to 12 microgram percent maximum dose of ozone which are administered was less than 2 to 3 mg Bochi sometimes even said one milligram per session per patient is adequate. Some therapists go up to twenty micrograms or twenty gamma. The first therapist to challenge all these minuscule microscopic homeopathic doses is Dr. Prasham Shah of Mumbai. Dr. Prasham Shah. is also called the father of rational ozone therapy in india dr prasham shah challenged the existing concentrations and rationalized for the first time doses of 70 microgram per cent or 70 gamma this dose was standardized for both hematogenous and extra hematogenous administration Prasham has been using up to 200 ml of 70 microgram per cent ozone diffused in 100 ml of blood for MHT, which he calls it as triple MHT single pass. The process with video will be described soon in one of the lessons. His effective doses per patient per session. exceeded 14 mg per patient and the results were spectacular now this is what is a madrid declaration in which they say that in high major autotherapy a 30 to 40 microgram per ml ozone concentration should be given whereas in a low major autotherapy 10 to 20 can be given and they say as a disclaimer in some cases one may consider the use of up to 60 microgram per ml which has been proved with proved to be safe and with greater capacity of indicating uh, indicator of induction of cytokines venous volume has to be 50 to 100 ml and they normally per session dose have gone Up to a maximum of four in high, 
and 2 in low and they have advised to keep the doses between 2 to 4 milligrams of ozone. IAOS doses thus appear very contrary to the Madrid declaration and the conventional ozone administration. IAOS IBU system was developed about a year ago. Initially, we began with 40 gamma diffusion of ozone in about 1 liter of blood. The effective ozone administered per patient per session was between 40 to 50 milligrams. This is about 10 times the amount recommended by the Madrid declaration. The dose is extremely effective though it is about 10 times the Madrid declaration. But still we felt that even more ozone can be administered safely as it is the nascent oxygen that is producing all the magic and no upper limits have yet been established. Though a lot of scare has been created about hemolysis with higher doses, nobody has actually tried and presented the picture of attempting to produce hemolysis by higher doses or smeared the slides or have shown the slides or have published the papers. Slowly, IAOS EBU ozone concentration was increased to 70 gamma or 70 microgram per milliliter and the results were even better. After each session, blood smears were taken from both the inflow and outflow sets so that we could keep a tab on what was the status of the red blood cells and other uh, blood cells before and after infusion. None of these slides showed any hemolysis. On the contrary, post ozone, EBU and MHT, the white and red cells appeared healthier, more rounded and more bouncy. The question that always plagued our mind was whether higher concentrations could be administered with more advantages as to whether 80 to 100 mg of ozone per session, 80 to 100 milligrams of ozone per session were more effective and rational, meaning 70 to 100 total ozone per session rather than 2 to 4 milligram as usually advised by Madrid Declaration or BOSI or other followers of traditional ozone therapies. At this stage, we must do some simple arithmetic or mathematics. For routine major autohemotherapy, we use 50 cc of 70 gamma ozone. That is about 3.5 grams of ozone in our normal 4 to 5 liters of blood. In integrated medicine, 10 pass ozone therapy, they use 10 microgram percent in 50 ml 10 times, which is 5000 micrograms in total per session. In IAOS IBU, we begin with doses of 70 microgram per ml and started with a total dose of 40,000 to 50,000 gamma per second. That is, 40 to 50 milligrams per session, which is 10 times the maximum doses that have been approved or declared in the Madrid Declaration for Hematogenous Therapies. As all patients in our IOAS experiments had significant betterment of their symptoms and experience no complications. I personally wanted to test the safety limits of ozone and I had an ozone IBU 
in which over 75000 micrograms were administered that is 75 milligrams of ozone in a nibu and i personally felt amazing after that Mrs. Nandanjana Jha, who is a junior scientific officer in the Indian Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons, had a session in which we use 100 to 110 micrograms per cent in an EBU process. And there she is. She has inaugurated one showroom yesterday. She is our team. She has an EBU at 1 by 30 second of a liter of 100 gamma ozone for about 30 minutes. Make it one hundred thousand micrograms in one session. That is about hundred milligrams. The worry has always been hemolysis and other complications with ultra high doses of ozone, MHT, and ibu. And for this, I began blood smear experimentations. The ozone concentration was progressively increased. Up to 110 micrograms, and the total ozone administered per session in hematogenous form increased to 1 lakh micrograms or more, meaning 100 milligram or more of ozone administered to one patient in one session. All subject patients had an amazing and positive experience, and today's procedure was done on an anesthetist, Dr. Neeraj. these are the landmark patients or landmark people for whom we have documented the data boshi said that 2 gamma 0.5 to 1.5 mg per session was the maximum permissible as per madrid declaration 3 to 4 mg were permissible when i took an ebu on myself i took 70 mg of ozone when my assistant chandraya took she took 110 mg of ozone dr neeraj could take 140 mg of ozone in one session dr neeraj is a fit healthy 43 year old anesthetist md specially interested in autoimmune disorders cancer survivors rehab and geriatric anesthesia he personally wanted to experience an ebu procedure and with his consent we tried 110 gamma at 1 by 32 liter per minute for 45 minutes the arithmetic and mathematics of this session 1.3 liters of ozone administered at 110 gamma making it a total of 1.4 lakh micrograms in 5 liters of blood total ozone administered in this 45 minute session was 140 mg this is like 40 times the dose maximum dose recommended by the madrid declaration and 50 to 60 times the dose as advised by bosi this should be the i we as per iaos this should be the ideal dosages for autoimmune suppression post chemo in malignancies and septicemia hiv etc the lesson 23 of the advanced ozone course is a real time demonstration of the procedure where we will see dr neeraj major uh, extra corporeal blood oxygen ozonization and see the complete results of the procedure special thanks to dr najma asim our pathologist for picto micrographs shown at the end of the talk she is in palakkad and we are happy to have her in a team and let us go for the video of the lesson on advanced lesson on ozone therapies by omta gmt and iaos
Good afternoon friends. This video is a step by step procedure of non hemodialysis filter pure ultraviolet irradiated extracorporeal blood oxygen ozonization as a part of OMTA GMT IAOS course. This is a real time unedited step by step video for course participants and ozone practitioners only. The video or link is not shared for public. This is for course participants only and please do not share the links. Any doubts and questions please ask in the group. The first step is to don the gloves and remove the Ibu bottle from its stand sterile cover. There are three holes on the top, one through which ozone enters, one through which blood enters and one through which the excess pressure and foam go out. So before we put the bottle in the UVBI hanger, it is necessary to put the out part and connect the tube to a glass bottle. Here we are going to use 110 micrograms of ozone that is 110 gamma ozone for a period of about 20 to 30 minutes to ozonize one and a half to 2 liters of blood. First of all, we take half cc of heparin, mix it with 5 ml of normal saline and cap the syringe and keep it to one side. This is the priming syringe for the donor site. We now take another syringe, extract 3, 3.5 ml of heparin and this is put into the saline bottle which will later be connected to the Ibu system and will be used as a continuous flow during the procedure of transfusion. The same syringe again will collect about half cc of heparin with 3 ml of saline and that will be used as the second priming syringe for the recipient hand. So here 3 ml is mixed and inject into the saline so that we have a heparinized solution. The bottle is shaken and ready. Small quantity of heparin is now extracted and this time again half ml of heparin is mixed with 4 to 5 ml of saline and the same is capped and set aside as this is going to be the second priming syringe. So now we have a heparin filled diluted saline bottle and two primed syringes. The next step is opening <coughs> the Ibu set 1. This set has an input tube which will put the blood into the Ibu bottle. The patient recipient tube which is made up of silicone rubber so that it does not collapse during the working of the peristaltic pump. 
another inlet for heparin the diluted heparin saline which we had earlier made and this is a standard transfusion set the entire system is latex rubber free only using silicone the heparin bottle is now connected to the saline bottle and the same is hung on the drip stand now we have a perfusion pump which is the iaos perfusion pump the system is connected the pump is first started the rotation is checked and we ensure that it is moving in the right direction we start off at a low speed of about 10 ml per minute and once we are happy we connect the other end of the perfusion system to the ebu bottle and the part beyond heparin goes into the perfusion set this is the ozone out from the ozone machine which now goes into the plus part of the top part of the ebu bottle so that the ozone reaches straight through the stainless steel 316 l tube into the middle of the blood into the bottom of the blood the connections are now ready and we can see that from the input the heparin is connected before the input now the veins are identified and two connections are added one is for the donor site and the other is for the recipient site all videos have not been speeded up nor been edit edited and here we are putting a 16 gauge venflon even an 18 gauge venflon can work but the transfusion speed will be a little slow we try to get the largest vein possible the donor vein site is primed and a syringe is attached now we have to attach or anchor the donor site the subject and the people in the room are wearing ultra violet protective goggles the input flow part is attached and the ibu system perfusion pump is started to allow the blood to come in we can see that the blood is being sucked in the heparin joins the blood before it is being sucked in the blood is being pumped out from the pump and going into the bottle on the opposite side the recipient vein is attached and 
the same will now get the blood going back. We can see that now the recipient vein is being identified. Meanwhile, on the donor site, the blood has crossed 150 ml and is being ozonized. This individual has excellent veins and we were lucky to be able to get 16 gauge vein plants in either side. He is Dr. Neeraj, an anesthetist from Bangalore, keenly interested in Ibu therapy and the system and wants to try it on himself before he tries it on any patient. The recipient site is primed and kept ready. The benflon is anchored and the syringe left in place. Now we insert a, the blood is already in the bottle being ozonized at 110 micrograms per milliliter. The nurse has not been able or is finding it difficult to insert. Finally, the recipient site is connected and the flow of the donor and recipient sites must be identical. We can already start to see the difference between the ozonated blood which is outgoing and the venous blood which is incoming. So now the blood that is entering into the Ibu bottle is being ozonated with 110 micrograms per ml of ozone which is way beyond the concentrations described in easy ozonotherapy book, you can see that the regulator is on 1 by 32 of a milliliter, which means we are producing ozone at a concentration of 110 micrograms or 110 gamma. The inflow is around 35 to 40 ml per minute. And the outflow is also matchingly 35 to 40 ml per minute. We can see that the ozo, the heparin that is being mixed in the solution is extremely low. And this is the whole sequence, blood from the donor site, heparin being attached to it, blood going into the bottle in blue color, venous blood, the outflow is matching the inflow and the blood that is coming out is bright pink tomato red compared to the blood which is going in. So once again blood coming in, apparent being mixed, the whole thing going into the Ibu bottle, Ibu bottle being gamma, uh, ultraviolet irradiated, ozone being added at 110 gamma and the blood being transfused. You can see the difference in colors between the incoming and outgoing blood due to ozonization. The pump is working at 35 milliliters per minute. And the regulator is on 1 by 30 second liter per minute, which means in 10 minutes 3.2 liters or 3000 ml of ozone amounting to 
110 meaning 35,000 to 40,000 gamma will go into the blood. As the blood gets ozonized, we can see the stark difference in color between the incoming and outgoing blood. Very minimal heparin is being used. We can see the blood being pumped in, pumped up into the bottle and then going down, changing in color, going to the opposite vein. Once we have done the desired timing, the inflow tube is removed, the remaining blood is allowed to pump into the Ibu flask. This doctor had a total of 22 minutes of perfusion and total of 26 or 27 minutes including transfusion. In this 30 minutes at average of 35 to 40 ml per minute more than 1.2 to 1.5 liters of his blood were ozonated and mixed with the remaining amount of blood. The assistant keeps a clear and close watch on the ozone which is being inflowing once the entire blood is gone into the perfusion pump, we switch off the perfusion pump and we remove the blood inflow from the Ibu flask. The remaining blood about 150 ml is allowed to flow in slowly into the recipient site. You can see that the inflow pipe is now being removed. The ultraviolet lamp of course remains in place. The system is disconnected from the perfusion pump. Heparin part is removed. Now only the outflow remains where the blood is flowing and is being continuously ozonated as it flows. As you can clearly see in the system, no hemodialysis filters were used. In pure extracorporeal blood oxygen ozonization, where we depend on the oxidation benefits of ozonized blood, we do not depend on hemodialysis filters which are ancient and obsolete technology. We must have borosilicate flint free glasses with silicone stoppers and stainless steel diffusers all of which are 100% ozone compatible. Around 5 to 6 ml of blood are deliberately left into the transfusion set because we want to make smears of the highly ozonated blood to ensure that this high amount of ozonization does not cause hemolysis or any adverse effect on the cellular architecture of the retransfused blood. At the end of this talk, we shall be putting up the pictures of the blood slides and we will have a pre and post blood picture which will tell you about the cellular architecture after high dose ozonization. As ultraviolet lights are used, spectacles are used, these are the two slides of the smears which are going to be pathologically examined to find out if there has been any change in the cellular morphology 
of the blood smears. In Dr. Neeraj's case, the blood from the two perfusion sets, donor and recipient sites, were collected and smears were made. These smears were spent, sent to Dr. Najma, the pathologist, and a pathological analysis was done. You can see on the left is a pre ebu smear and on the right is a post ebu smear. The scattering of the cells or the distances between the cells is probably because of the heparinization during the ebu. So the cell density seems a little less. But if you look at the cell health, individual cell health, there are more oval and oblong cells on the left whereas more plumper or rounder cells on the right. There is absolutely no difference in cell morphology, architecture, shape or distribution and we could easily bust the hemolysis myth. This is the highest power on the microscope and we can see that compared to the pre ebu smears, the post ebu red blood cells have changed from oval to round, they look more plump, they look more energetic and of course the patterns of the cells on the right look little more better uh, to the cells on the left. As shown in the previous slide, the RBC enriched by Ibu appeared to be plumper and more nourished. So, this talk was about how much is too much <coughs> and the conclusion is that upper limits of safe ozone administration has not been administered and just like 100% pure oxygen, Maybe you can keep breathing 100% pure oxygen without detrimental effects, indefinitely without causing any damage to human body. In a similar manner, we do not know how much ozone can be mixed with the body safely, but at IOS, I, IAOS, we have proved that up to one, one uh, 50 grams, 150 grams or 1.5 lakh, sorry, 150,000 uh, micrograms or gamma of ozone are safe for a patient. This question might not have been answered completely yet, either in the literature or in this lecture. But the search is ongoing and for the new IOS protocols have determined that 110 micrograms per ml of ozone are extremely safe. Administration of 140 milligrams or 1 to 1 1.4 lakh micrograms per session does not cause hemolysis or other issues. Pardon for the spelling mistake. This is applicable both to major autohemotherapy and extracorporeal blood oxygen ozonization. Message from Dr. Neeraj who flew from Bangalore to Kochi, drove to Parakar, had his session, drove back to Kochi, took a flight and reached home the same day. He says, Good evening, sir. Just reached home. Thank you, sir. It was a most amazing experience. It was an amazing experience. Most grateful. As this is an ongoing lesson, more lessons will follow. Please message in the course WhatsApp group in case you have any doubts. Have a nice day.